I'm Rue McClanahan, and I'm just about to host this video on the loving care of your cat. But first, somebody told me there's a cat over here I should see. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Well, who is this pretty thing? This is Punky. Hi, Punky. <laughs> I'd like you to meet some of her friends. All right. Aren't they wonderful? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Kitty cats everywhere. Oh, my beautiful kitty cat. Oh, look at the side. Oh, look at the Siamese. Oh, these gorgeous kitties. Hi, baby. Who is this? Do they all have names? Yes, they do. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm still Rue McClanahan, and this is a more official welcome to my video about the care and treatment of your cat. I promise we'll go back to Cat Mountain a little later and tell you what it's all about, but first, I want to tell you what this video is all about. It's all about Celestine here, and 55 million other Celestines in the United States alone. And these are just the Celestines with homes. I feel that we as people have an obligation to treat the Celestines of this world as well as we humanly can. And it's not out of mercy because they're such sweet little animals. It's out of respect for these creatures who inhabit the world with us. Our plan is to cover as much as we can of the various aspects of cat care, from the basics of health and fitness to the mysterious inner workings of the feline mind. That's your mind we're talking about, honey. I keep using the term we because being a cat lover doesn't mean I'm an expert on the subject, but I do know someone who is, and he happens to be sitting right here next to me. This is Dr. David Griffiths. David is a veterinarian and runs an animal emergency clinic here in Los Angeles. He's going to be my expert throughout the video, and I'll be picking his brain on virtually every subject of cat care I can think of. David, glad to have you aboard. Rue, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And I'll be happy to have my brain picked by such an enchanting woman. Mm, you're off to a very good start, <laughs> Doctor. And so should we be, so let's get started, shall we? I guess for some, getting started means getting that cat. If you haven't already got one, that's a good first step. The British are a dry lot. Taking on a cat means you're making a commitment to the animal for its lifetime, so choosing the cat that's right for you needs care and some thinking ahead. Some people might think that a cat is a cat is a cat, but there are a number of considerations to take into account. So David, let's talk about the various options involved. Well, first of all, there's the decision of age. Do you want a kitten or a more mature cat? Then there's a male or female, long hair or short hair, and of course the most important, mixes or pedigrees. Well, let's go point by point and start with the age consideration. Of course, everybody loves an adorable kitten, but a mature cat might be a good choice for an older person or a busy single person who might have difficulty meeting the demands of a kitten. You mean like the feeding schedule and litter training? That's right. And also the veterinary considerations, vaccinations and such. Just like babies, kittens are susceptible to more things and require more attention paid to their health. Okay, let's talk about sex. Well, I don't recommend it on the first date. No. Uh, seriously. Uh, <laughs> there are some differences between male and female, like the male's spraying and the female's heat. However, the differences are virtually eliminated once you have them sterilized, which I believe is an absolute must unless you're a breeder. And I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, if cat care had a top ten list, spaying and neutering would be number one with a bullet. Well, we'll talk more about the need for that later, but let's get back to making the right choice. Now, how about long hairs versus short hairs? Not a major issue. With long hairs, you'll have more of a grooming concern, and you'll also find that long hairs have more problems with hairball. Okay, now last but not least, the mixes versus the pedigrees. Well, I think everyone's aware that if you buy a pedigree cat from a breeder or a pet store, you'll be spending more money than you would on a mix. But be aware that with a pedigree, a breeder might make some kind of contractual breeding arrangement. Oh, that's when they want you to bring the cat back so it can mate with another pedigree? Yeah, that's right. And another thing is that if you're interested in a kitten you've seen at a cat show, it's always a good idea to wait until you can see it with the rest of its litter mates in its own environment. Uh-huh. And what about having them checked out by a veterinarian? Well, you should do that no matter what kind of cat you get, and no matter where you get it. And to do that, don't some vets give you the first visit free? That's a common practice, yes. <laughs> that's good to know. Well, we've talked about them enough. It's time to have a look at some of them. We visited a local animal shelter to learn about how to adopt a cat. 
Debbie, my first question is, who are these two? These two are brand new here. They came in yesterday. They were brought in by their owner with brothers and sisters in hopes of finding new homes for them. They're oh. just kittens that they had no more, just didn't have any place for them now, so we're going to try to find new homes. Didn't have the mama spade is what they exactly. represent. Exactly. Yep. And we may or may not have new homes for them. What's the procedure for how long you keep them? A kitten under four months of age, we hold for the owner for three days, and on the fourth day, it'll go up for adoption. An adult, which is over four months, we hold for seven days for the owner, and on the eighth day, it goes up for adoption. Mm -hmm. How long are they held up for adoption? Usually about a day, could be as much as a week. Uh huh. Well, here's a question I already know the answer to. What happens when they don't get adopted? Well, when we can't place them, the shelters are forced to destroy them. I know it's a fact of life that doesn't sit well with some people, including me, but I guess we really have no idea of the numbers that you're up against. Could you give us some idea of how many cats have to be put to sleep each year? In the six city uh, shelters that we've got, approximately 38,000 were impounded. Uh, out of those, approximately 20, about 28,000 were destroyed. That's terrible. When you get a cat from the shelter, there is a condition that you must have it sterilized, right? That's right. When you adopt one of our animals, we set up an appointment for you to bring the cat back and sterilization's done on the premises. Do people usually follow up on that? In most cases, yes. What helps is that they pay for the sterilization at the same time they adopt the cat. Well, that's a good idea. Now, David, at what age should we have our cat sterilized? Oh, females should be done at about six months of age and males anywhere between six and nine months, oh. ideally. I just hope people get the message of how important it really is. David, in general, when people are deciding on a cat, what should they look for to determine the cat's health? And maybe even uh, its personality? Well, as far as personality goes, it's a little difficult to tell when you first pick them up. And, well, unless they play with you and purr, but most of the kittens will do that. You look for a... The layman really looks for a bright eye and a nice coat. You can tell if there's some skin problems, mm. that he looks fairly well fed, oh, he or she. Sleek. Yeah, and that, that's all you can tell generally in the first instant. However, of course, the, the two main safeguards are that the people here wouldn't put a do uh, cat out that wasn't in, ob in good health, and then also they insist that you go to your own veterinarian within two or three days and get him examined, and uh, of course that'll cover most of the problems you're likely to meet. Well, Debbie, let's say that someone wants to adopt this one. Um, how, how, does the, how does the process work? Well, you must be over 18 or accompanied by someone over 18. You must wait for the available date because, like I said, we wait a certain time for the possible owners to come and claim them. And what are the fees and the other requirements? Our males run about $22, kittens and adults, and our females run about $28 for both kitten and adult. And why are the females more expensive? The spaying fee is more expensive than the neutering Oh, the I see, because more is involved. Right. Beside the normal tags, you, knew, you have a new method of identification, don't you? Yes, we do. We have the microchip, which is an in injected between the shoulder blades right underneath the skin. We have a device that reads that, the number off of the, the microchip, and then we can contact the owners by that information. I know that... There has to be so much heartbreak in your job. I just don't know how you deal with it. How, how do you? Well, we try our best to adopt them out and to find good homes for them. And we just have to realize that those that don't get adopted are really better off being destroyed than they you are. Me out here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It loves to go up. Well, I just think you do a yeah. great job. Thank I you. mean, you and all your co-workers, I couldn't do it. I couldn't stand it. I really applaud you. And I want to thank you so much for visiting with us today and helping us all out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, shelters aren't the only place to get cats like those. There are pet rescue organizations all over the country, like the Amanda Foundation here in L.A., who also perform health checks before they put a cat up for adoption. There are a lot of people who care, but we can always use more.